another chapter from Methods in Magic, Ciphering, Stealth Techniques, and Cloaking. Once we came and went as we please, now we come and need to escape the presence to ever attain liberation. Beria, or energy, goes where the D, or mind, goes. I'll use, use this D Beria link to avoid prana and kundalini as this would be inaccurate in this context. I want to focus exclusively on the mental sphere and thought forms which properly use organized, visualized, mentated, cogitated, proportioned, rationed and energized or subtly materialized are useful in many magical operations depending on the potency and talent of the observer. Surveillance is a big thing in human society and on the other side, the surveillance of thoughts, the detection of anomalies and illegitimate illegitimate magic or illegal magic on earth, or any form of circumvention of the allowed by the transcending, transgressive, unauthorized magicians and pirates, such as being considered by the other side myself. Anarchs of the modern world is a red flag to pacify such an individual, deprive him of memories and abilities, and in the worst case, eliminate him. By whom? By those individuals who govern this system that authorizes and register the technological or etheric grid, that is the distributed geomagnetic field complementary with the bioelectromagnetic component of the human being and the pneumatophytic or soul component of the human animal. The God complex did not come out of nowhere but was created by those whose intention was to control the resources of human minds, hearts and souls. As far as I know, there are three vertical spheres up to the stratosphere with horizontally distributed power centers on the geomagnetic grid around Earth, all of which contain illusory sources, heavens, and so on. Once controlled, you can fill them with anything, religion, ideology, beliefs, science, illusions of palaces. Sources are programmed, dogs on leash, that say what they are programmed to say. If you stuff them with Judeo-Christian belief systems, that's exactly what you'll get. That does not mean they are true. It just means that it is the content that they are programmed to spread, to hide all the other possibilities of liberation. It's usually the victors that write history. It also does not mean that the network is completely dominated by Judeo-Christian faith. It means that they are in the majority and therefore it takes a strong and steady persevering spirit, bullshit proof and cutting its inner truth like an immovable diamond to discover all of that and evade their control systems. To escape the inhibiting beliefs and engage in magical and spiritual practices veritably, if one rejects their forcible conversion, their wallowing in cult and shame, as the civilizational pre-programmed architectures of meanings and beliefs and the technological magic of fake miracles, burning hearts, crowns of thorns, and other pseudo-taumaturgic incentive trips for fools just to convert them and gather the sheep under the slave house. Personally, I prefer what I received from the gods and the masters and mistresses of Eden origin outer heavens, higher heavens, the intelligences of the spheres of planets. And Judeo-Christian bigots never bought me. Nor the gifts that ignorance of darkness had to offer. To leave the ionosphere, one needs a well-developed pneumatic component. To reach the extralunar and planetary spheres, stars, one needs a vehicle provided by the gods and transform one's spirit in the abyss. Crossing the abyss and drinking the ambrosia of the gods is a descent below the zones of control, a transformation of the spirit and a preparation for ascent, bypassing the only trap of earth, becoming starborn. The descent into Hades or Tartarus zones brings a trick. Hell is breathing down your neck and trying to keep you there, escaping psychiatry or religion if you take a wrong step borders on a miracle not committing a crime and being under the influence of malignant possessions if you are loyal to the solar forces depends on the strength of character and the counter-influence of helpful deities that shield you and protect you. In other words, you will not make many friends on earth because you committed a prison break. From the point of view of the innocent prisoner, it is innocent. 
from the point of view of the gods, it is a capital crime to become a minor demigod on earth because of the transformation that comes with the Eleusinian initiation, which has been clearly forbidden for centuries and is transgressed only from time to time. From the point of view of human souls and minds, it is a honey trap because everything within the three regnum or the three spheres or kingdoms of heavens on earth, a forest of pleasant illusions to keep these imprisoned souls happy. It is vulnerable to rebirth on earth because the times on earth continues, continue mercilessly in a linear fashion and it does not get any better with time. The question now is, how do you get away with your secret operations without being discovered? Ciphering is a method of disguising and camouflaging the intention, deed, performance, talk, visualization, materialization, evocation, invocation, incarnation, broadcasting, emanation, reception, invocation, action and effect in such a way that no unauthorized person can gain access to the information contained therein apart from the intended recipient or the effect. It is a way of modulating the mind to put all this in an incomprehensible language that cannot be understood by unauthorized personnel who are interested in overtaking it or distorting the walking of the magical operation. Human languages are easily deciphered so what I write or think in words is immediately overtaken by anyone who can understand human languages from the other side and from the electromagnetic spectrum. Mentalese is a language of ideas and a separate tool to be mastered. Encapsulation of mentalese language in further layers of ciphers and codes during ritual practice requires knowledge, theory and praxis. Encapsulated ciphers can still be cracked unless you use quantum ciphering on the mental level where the information changes in the opposite direction and mutates into meaningless strings, and only the one who has a unique key is able to receive it only once and execute the commands, request disposing of both information and keys at the time it effectuates. Cloaking techniques and camouflage in magic are first about making our operation invisible, or we create deceptions and illusions decoys that we are doing something else to make the action of transmitting information invisible to the intruders and nosy entities and people working on the other side. Furthermore, present illusory data and fake tokens that are mistaken for real information in the process of ciphering and camouflaging. The more sophisticated the deceptions we create, the better. Ultimately, we can assume that the higher thresholds of united executive command and control the information is sent to, the easier it will be partially omnisciently decoded, and we will escape detection by low threshold levels of information detection. The good thing is that sometimes we can play with our cards face up openly, but this risks spoiling our world, overtaking it and undoing all our efforts so we walk with open cards only temporarily. The occult means hidden. It is a sacred science, not a card game, but a game with sophisticated and advanced rules that change according to the setting, person, ethical and astral environment, genius lucky, and environment, time and space. Hence, I finished the chapter. Oh, why is it important to cipher, camouflage, and create decoys in your magical operation? Because often wise, they may be spoiled, destroyed, or reverted against you. To bypass the prison, you need a lockpick. And you need to hide yourself well, so the guards won't detect, take 